Uh, Wacko Chaco says, Grubby, I watched the whole tournament, but I was very confused. In double elimination style, the winner bracket needs to lose the final twice. Why didn't this happen? Uh, it was in the rules, but not in the English rules. So I didn't know until we were already in the finals. And yes, you are right. If you play a double elimination tournament, in order to lose the tournament, you should, from winner bracket, lose two consecutive best of fives to the loser bracket team. But they removed that. So what you have is a allowance for any team in the whole tournament at any time to lose one entire best of five and then to win everything else and then they can win the tourney. The one that did the best, that won everything, gets punished by not having that right. You get to the finals and they can lose only one best of five. So by performing well, they get punished without leniency. And everyone else that lost they get blessed with a second life. So you can see how this is not fair. But for the viewers, just looking at different factors, and I have a better overview now, not just as a player perspective, for the viewers, it is more exciting. Most people don't even get double elimination. They don't even know how the grid came to be. So they just, um, they just watch. There are a few critical thinkers, and they'll be like, hey, wait a minute, this should be double elim. But uh, that's just something the tournament organizers decided. The, the cons are it's not fair and it's bad for the winner team. But the, the boons are uh, it's more exciting for the for the people. So it's not like, hey, they just won a best of five. Now they have to win another one, same map again. You know, that kind of thing. And it's good for the organizers because the schedule is much more predictable for your broadcast. That it's one best of five, not maybe two best of fives. So there you go. And for what it's worth, I think we would have lost the rematch anyway. But uh, you never know, maybe not. But anyway, that was the tournament system. It's not like they changed it or anything uh, last minute, but that's, that's the system. I would never make a system like that. If I was a tournament organizer, I would have the whole thing single limb, but there's definitely something to be said for this. Um, grants with second place, thanks. Nice haircut, thanks. Dude, Shishi was amazing. So happy you picked him as a teammate. Yeah, me too. I was happy he was still available in second rotation. Hey, Bugs the Lang. I'm still scrolling down. There's way much comments for uh, such a low viewership uh, early uh, stream beginning. <laughs> you guys are active. It's awesome. Kirby, you know that when you play in the arena, your opponent can watch the stream at the same time on second monitor? Of course. It's always been like that as a streamer, not just in the arena, anything. It's okay. If they want to cheat, they can cheat. You're like Bobby Fischer in chess? Yeah, I mean, I get paranoid about bad conditions and conspiracies as well. Not as much as him. But after you've experienced real shit before, You'll be looking out for it. That's not really paranoia, but it's like caution. But yeah. I, I can definitely see what happened with Bobby Fischer. <laughs> yeah, it's very impressive what Neo did uh, for the Nostalgia Battlefield cast. Maybe I heard he went for a long time. Did you scout the potential teammates much before the tournament? No, like what you saw is pretty much what I prepared every day on stream. I didn't want to get emotionally invested in the outcome because it was partially an experiment to see, okay, every tournament I ever played, I cared a lot. And sometimes that, uh, that pressure, that stress uh, energized me and elevated me. And sometimes that, that you know, that the competitive stress uh, destroyed me before I even played the first game. I'm not someone like Novak Djokovic who for years and years is dominant and looks impervious and you know I didn't have formal training I didn't have the same mental fortitude and uh, at times I disappointed myself with uh, my mental jelliness so this was a unique opportunity to play a tournament without too much pressure 
And I feared that if I prepare, and this may sound weird to you, but if I prepare too much, I'll start believing and wanting it too much and then play even worse. So yeah, I tried to prepare, but did I study all my potential teammates? No, I figured it was going to be enough time anyway when I was in China and it was true. There was time. And also, uh, and this is actually really relevant, I asked um, a person called Play FFA, Ugri Lanen or something. He's a prominent Warcraft 3 community figure right now. And the Back to Warcraft guys, who they think are good players and what's the matchup like. And they both advised me and it was useful. After that, I had to make a judgment call. Why did the venue close suddenly? The Back to Ooh, Warcraft cast looked friend. surprised and confused. Uh, in China, the government has strict controls over everything, and usually, usually, uh, usually you'll have a venue until a certain time, and after that, they'll cut off the internet, the lighting, the heating, whatever, and so you gotta go. In this particular case, I think there was uh, internet problems, but I don't know if it's because they cut it off. Presumably, if you want to go on, you need to fight the Chinese government, or it uh, I don't know. Greetings, friend. Watched for a long time, but here's to two months of less than three. Thanks to Shoops and Pretender for the subs. Still scrolling down, but we lost some time because we were too long-winded. Neo said your teammates weren't happy that you picked them. Why? I don't know what he based that on, Fiolek. But I had the very awkward feeling that it might just be like that like i wouldn't be surprised if it was true but uh i'm not sure that it is true because i don't have any evidence about that so i don't know what he based it on but it's awkward isn't it when you know that some of the other players are more active and I have a maybe better you. chance of winning games with love d then of course if you feel like you're a very good amateur or a qualified player you'd like to be picked by that one but if I let that guilt get to me, what should I do? Pick a weak player so I don't disadvantage a pro. Yeah, so I, I make the best of it. I mean, you can't get bogged down with such uh, concerns. Uh, I'm just gonna go do my best. And funnily enough, WFC and Shishi seemed like friends. They were sitting next to each other. I didn't even know how they look. So when I picked them, I realized I picked two friends together. That was kind of lucky because they're gonna get good synergy and team spirit with each other at least, even if not me, you know? Uh, what went through your mind when your tower strategy got wrecked versus Alice? So the tower strategy versus Alice got wrecked in the opening game. Nothing went through my mind because uh, you should not concern yourself with the past or the future when you play a game. Only the game itself. It's uh, it's for pundits, viewers, casters. They worry about. Oh my God, what does it, what does it mean? What does it feel like? How bad? As a player, you should not concern yourself with that. And luckily, I did not. Uh, what I did have going through my mind is that I didn't oh, lose to Alice to the I lost to myself Aloha. thank you very much Resikan hope you're okay after your op um, I didn't I know it's corny but I didn't lose to Alice I lost to myself because uh, okay so the, the tower rush is like this Altar, Burrow, Barracks. Burrow, Voodoo Launch from your uh, from your 10 foot Scout Peon. Well, first of all, I forgot my 10 foot Scout Peon. I forgot. My Peon was 30 seconds late. To make a mistake like that isn't what, it, what you call in sports an unforced error. Not the pressure of something he's done, but just forgot. Zoning out. This is what I mean when I'm talking about tournament stress rustiness i get there and i think like okay i'm gonna do this 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 blackout so no peon scout so okay i'm now in crisis mode because i'm doing this build but i forgot my peon scout and we can see that in replay later but um then i send my blade across and you're supposed to get circlet and dust and then start hitting his demon and archer for uh depleting his health and mana fast so I sent my blade across, not past the shop, no circlet and dust. Now I can't trade effectively. It's the linchpin, the key of the strategy. 
So what am I really doing? It's not really the towers that I used to practice and play in competitions. Against like such a silly unforced error at this moment, I've already lost and he hasn't done a single thing except do his standard opener. So that is very disappointing. I disappoint myself, but I don't give a damn what people were thinking, like bad player or whatever. Can't concern yourself with that, like what people may think. But for myself, I'm like, God, that was trash. And so that was one uh, default loss. Uh, how many games did I play there? Seven or eight? Six? Seven? I played three games okay, in my opinion, out of the seven. The first two were shit. Uh, and then the loss against Focus was a good game. He outplayed me. Uh, the win against the Undead was a good game. And there was one more that was pretty okay. I mean, like against TH, I wouldn't say that I lost to myself. I'm probably always going to lose to him uh, with the level that he has now and I have. And hell, even back then. So, uh, yeah. Those three were fine for me, but like a few others, my micro, uh, my mouse friend. felt like shit or, or I made like unforced mental errors, that kind of thing. That I really enjoy every single minute of your dub C3 stream. Less than three keep going and greetings from Germany smile. Thank you, Bama Bear. Trying to scroll down. Uh, I thought it was simple casket, but it was fine. I mean, it's water under the bridge, I be big noob. Did you practice with the other pros during the tournament? Yeah, actually, funnily enough, when um, after the draft was made, Shishi, he. Uh, he has almost no English, but he's clearly intelligent. Uh, so it was easy, even without almost any words, to communicate with him. Um, also, he tried. And so uh, he just uh, pointed at the computer and he said, you and, me, you and me play. So we started playing. We played like five practice games. That was the extent of my practice games with the other pros there. I won the first. I lost the next three. But I think that was it. How did you know Sishi was the perfect choice? I mean, well, sometimes it just works out. You just get lucky. Like, it may not even have a per been a perfect choice to begin with. He may have just been on fire. Uh, what I did know is that he was the most helpful of the practice partners that I've ever had in China. I mean, that counts for something. When I was in China, 95% of the pros did not practice with me. Either because... I don't know, they don't like me or they don't want to buff my skill. Like, deny me practice to make it more difficult due to, you know, solidarity. There's that Bobby Fischer thing again. But uh, Shishi was always there. We played a lot of games, so I had affinity with him. And I hope that if we had a chance, we could play together. Uh, I didn't pick him first because there were four other very, you know, prospective good players. WFC, Focus, Lolayat, and Life. Uh... But luckily, he was still there in second rotation, so I snapped him up. Still scrolling down, trying to reach the end. But I also want to answer everyone's questions. Hi, Todd. Kirby, I was so happy to see you play, and I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun, too. Will you ever again play a Warcraft 3 tournament? Well, this was a one-time thing. But I'm not ruling out another one-time thing in the future. But I'm, it's not like I'm like ready to get back in the pro scene. Sorry. Kirby, what's with the 4-3 resolution? See, that's... Something you doing? I can do that. Hide several buildings to deceive the opponent about your strategy equals. I mean, he will think that your choose okay, strategy understand. he understand. But you will surprise him. I understand. Sorry for my English. Man. <laughs> Man. Uh, dude, thanks for the request. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get that show on the road. I know how to do that, so... Later when we play. Every name is thanks. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's the thing. So I play at home with W3 Arena resolution. It is a true widescreen resolution. It's not part of Warcraft. It's a W3 Arena fix. So I get there and I have to play on four by three. First one I played, I played full screen, but it made the mouse feel like shit because uh, normally I'm using a certain mouse speed on 1920 times 1080 resolution. Uh, Warcraft 3 4x3 forces something like 
1366 times 768, something like that or whatever. Mouse feels different. First game I play like that, second game as well. Uh, third game I think as well, and then like I tried a lot of tweaking already until finally I did a. Because I've never played on NetEase either. I like I have to use NetEase. It's in Chinese. No one is helping me with it because the translator doesn't get NetEase and the NetEase users doesn't get English. Uh, so it was tough. And then uh, I I I grind a lot of games in between certain series to try and find a solution. And finally, I got it to be feeling comfortable. Uh, and that's why I started playing better too. Because like in the tower rush against Alice. Even though I messed up my build in a million different ways. I couldn't micro for shit. I couldn't even move my grunt from point A to B without it moving differently than I wanted to. Like, I know it sounds dumb, but if I had, like, my home stream playing level there, it would not be like that. But I had to deal with a lot of different things at once. And again, that's, you know, that's rustiness. It's, it's on me, I know. But I know it's true for me. Did you dye your hair? No, people ask me that. I don't know why. What made you decide to play the attorney? Uh, because uh, uh, actually my sponsor asked me to. They, they sponsored the attorney. And so that made me consider it. And uh, yeah, actually that's how it started. And I thought it was going to be fun. And then yeah, I, it was an opportunity to play without pressure as well. And then super happy actually to get second place even though i only won one game but it's better to win one game than none and again it took uh it took some time to get more comfortable there they even uh they were gonna give me chinese warcraft so that when uh, item drops i don't know what it is i don't know if it's worth risking my life is it a clause of attack or is it a ring of protection is it scourge bone chimes or strength plus six and when I asked for uh, English Warcraft, at first it was like, no, cannot. It's like, see, you need to fight for yourself to get conditions in life, guys. They'll probably think I'm fussy. He wants English Warcraft. But uh, after trying more, then you get it. But it's a constant struggle to get things done. So not everything is glorious, but when you're sitting there on on the stage and you you know you've got a camera on you and people are watching you again old feelings are there feels were had and when i'm cheering for cc or wfc there's no excitement quite like that in the world actually like the competitive excitement hell even the translator girl who was uh, by my side to try to translate whatever you know possible she was nervous she's like oh i'm nervous i'm like you don't even know the game like she doesn't even play the game yeah but she felt part of the team and uh when uh when Shishi or WFC win like the crucial match, two translator girls, they were like hugging each other and jumping like, yeah, we won, we won. <laughs> Isn't it cool how involved everyone feels? So uh, for the series against TH, uh, the team TH, they fit, my teammates told me that uh, TBC is gonna play first, the undead. And uh, I said, you know, at first it was just strategy to send me first every time because I'm probably the weakest. So if we send me first, then my teammates can pick map against the next opponent. So that's good strategy. Like, unless it's like, no, I'm not the weakest, I'm the strongest. But if you all agree on it, that's logical choice. Uh, but then against uh, TH, when they had an undead, well, really it's still my best matchup, Orc versus Undead. And also, I had been watching uh, the Asians play Orc vs. Undead, and it just doesn't make sense to me how the matchup is played. It seems like there's a kind of gentleman's agreement for both to go tier 3, both not to expand, and then just have a fight at 50 vs. 50. And it felt so hard every game for Orc. And I, and I don't see anything on the Undead army that says, you're not allowed to hit and run. It's like they just make a bunch of fiends, they upgrade them, they make statue, and then they go have a five minute fight in the orc base. Every game. I'm thinking like, why? Like, why do we take those fights? It doesn't make sense. We're supposed to hit and run against that kind of thing. Like if they just attack and win off that. Uh, funnily enough, Shishi said the same thing. He's like, you kill home. You kill, you, you do home. 
Langchi. Langchi is like Chinese word for raider. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. We can do that. No, I know my micro wasn't good in the first games. It could not be disco. I had a new resolution, new PC setup, everything. It was shit. I, I couldn't control anything. I made the bottom. I made the bottom of the chat. Finally. So uh, I, I want to go look at some replays together. You talking about the tour? Hell yeah. Okay. Game one. That should be me, right? Wait, Team Lin? Greetings, I think that's me. Friend. Dub C3 hype. Dub C3 hype. Revan for you. Thanks, dude. Let's just uh, walk through the tournament. Oh, you see my uh, email address. GG, yo. Or did you? Oh, I need to update Netties. All right, hold on a sec, guys. So, Grubster, when you're when you're moving back to China and getting some coaching to go pro again, I've never lived in China, man. Look at me. I'm a white guy. I haven't lived there, and I haven't been born there. I can't go back there to live there. No, I wasn't nervous, remind. It was not a mental issue, I'm telling you. Different resolution than I've been playing on for the last two years. Like, the speed is different. Hey, RNG monster. Yeah, uh... What did she, she tell me? He was like, uh... TBC likes. <gasps> I'm like, ah, oh. he likes making banshees. All right, if they like making banshees, it's best to, uh, I mean, Mass Raiders works just perfectly, so double beastery was confirmed to be good. You know, possession. <gasps> All right, loading the replay. Let's uh, let's run through the tournament, okay? And kind of uh, just follow my path through it. I'll put this here. And I'll put this here. So this is going to be 4x3 resolution. Because uh, that's the best we can do. Ready to work. And so, okay. I'm just going to explain you. What was going through my mind, playing these, what maybe issues I had or whatever. First of all, you can see this resolution, I have to play on this. I'm not used to this. I have a widescreen. So definitely had some mouse issues. Uh, Peel micro went fine, but then it's not, you know, that part is not that hard. Ready to work. So I'm supposed to send a peon scout now, right? The peon scout checks out that he's indeed doing Ace the Four creeping. And after that goes back to make Voodoo Lounge. I forgot. An unforced error. Uh, actually, the monitor was fine. The they even had 144 hertz refresh rate. It was great. The PC was great. The monitor was great. But uh, I definitely felt a bit rusty. Now he scouts me, and he doesn't see shop. And then he doesn't see the war mail, but he's clearly bemused by my building layout because there's. There's a lot of holes. And so he sees me coming in. Now here's my second mistake. I don't I don't go to the circlet shop. You're supposed to. With this build. I made this build. But part of it is going to the circlet shop. So you can trade effectively. So it's ridiculous. Then I don't get the wisp. I use double wind walk and take damage for a single wisp that detonates on me. Again, no circlets, so the trading is awful. Okay, he sees the peons, so he can start preparing. Now, from my experience of playing against Demon, level 1.9, who doesn't get the level 1 brute here, and he, and they go double inch to 4, staying at tier 1, normally, I win this type of game. Like, no amount of micro should be able to have them survive if they don't go for tier 2. This is the wrong response. The correct response is going to tier 2 and getting Pitlord, Beastmaster, Panda, something like that. Probably Pitlord. And then still Archers, yes, but also improved bows. This is wrong. Where is my blade? I'm finally belatedly getting the circlet. 
It's so bad. Imagine if I was here. This tower is up. Or if it isn't, my blade is hitting archers and demon during that. He's already hurt a bit. But like, now, obviously, like if my blade is here, I'm doing lots of damage. Just from this too, I heal my grunt and I'm supposed to send grunt away and have my blade rotate back down. But it takes so long even to do simple things because like, Everything felt very bad to me, like uh, my controls. And that's probably part mental, part different resolution. Can't make any surrounds to save my life. Can't even block archer. See, normally I'd keep that archer block on stream. Barely saving a grunt. And then finally getting zoned out once again. Not protecting a tower that was practically almost done. These towers come up and I mass repair. He's in a lot of trouble. But... Yeah, like his opening is not correct. And then you're not supposed to lose any units, but I'm body blocking my own grant. Uncharacteristic mistakes and basically GG from this moment onwards. Yes, 